Prepare yourself for a sprawling discussion on just about anything, where critical thinking meets pop culture in a collision of mind-bending proportions. Please secure all neurons and prepare for full frontal cortex. It's time for Incoherent Ramblings. Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new episode of Incoherent Ramblings. I'm your host, Joey Shamwell, and with me is... Satoshi Nakamoto. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. Dorian. Oh, Dorian. <laughs> Kenji Michael Lua. What? what? Kale Anderson. And Daryl George. Do we always have a minute? <laughs> we only have a minute here, guys. Uh, a sponsor <laughs> is... Uh, uh, Shepard? Shepard. Rep- Shepard Book. Because we're doing... <laughs> Terrence and Philip. Because <laughs> we're doing morality and ethics for today's episode. Episode okay. 043, which, by the way, is the one after 42, which is life, universe, and everything. The answer, which we didn't say that last week. It sounds like we have four sponsors, because I heard Shepard Book, <laughs> Terrence, and Philip. What's going on here? Yes! <laughs> Shepard Book is our sponsor. <laughs> We've had too much sugar. <laughs> All right. We, we, we don't you sponsor sugar, for sugar. You That's can reach it. us at show at iamrambling.com. Yeah. And, and, wow, I actually got time? <laughs> we do. Yeah. All, right. All right. All right, we're going to start off today's pre-ramble with each of our sections. Mine's changed a little bit, so here we go. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> I'm Prospector Joey, and today we're going to be doing the new thing for Joey. It's called Prospect of the Future. It's so you can try it out at home. <laughs> Holy well, shit. Why did we make this section <laughs> two minutes? I want one minute again. Yeah. That was too long. For hey, me. Why. Let me tell you. I'm going to tell you about something that's going on today. Did you guys hear about that plane crash? <laughs> no, that sucks, dude. You know what? I think I'll only use that voice. You hear about the hundreds of people who died? <laughs> I think I'll only use that voice. I was going to use that voice all the way through, but I think I'll only use it at the beginning because I can't focus when I'm trying to talk. All right. So uh, my, this new section is just going to be about things that are cool that uh, that are happening in the future that you can do heading towards the singularity After and such. Your time is up. <laughs> hey, no, I got a minute, two minutes. That's why I wanted extra time. I wanted to introduce this. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Uh, <laughs> as you guys may, uh, this is in the future for you guys, so you know the, there was the uh, crash of the Malaysian plane that nobody could find. There is a website uh, called, uh, damn, I should probably Where's remember. Where'sthatplane.com? <laughs> well, no. Dude, it, but that was, I'm surprised that URL was available. Damn, yeah, I no, it's right here. Uh, Tom Nod. And what they do is they take satellite images and they put them up for you to look through during natural disasters. So it's really cool. Like right now, you can go on and you can. they give you basically shots of the ocean from satellite pictures. And you can go through and see if you can find any of the wreckage and mark it. So hmm. it's actually a really cool. It's just one of those things in the future where this is the first plane crash where they've been able to use it looks that. looks like they found something. Well, they found, they have found something. They say it's from Japan, but it was a satellite. Some other plane. Crowdsourcing. <laughs> yeah. uh, Crowdsourcing, that's it, yeah. Right. All right, Paul. Cool. Word of the week! See, his intro is like five seconds. <laughs> Shut up, dude. <laughs> so, the word of the week. Red, red, red. <laughs> All right, today's fun and nasty word of the week is a Roman helmet. Oh, Jesus. Well, that's obviously the end of a circumcised penis. Well, <laughs> and, then, and then you take it off, and it hurts. Um, that just That's all I can see now. <laughs> that's all well, I can see. A Daryl? Roman, <laughs> uh, Roman it's helmet. Good. We got to, we um, that would be when you're searching around for the hole. And, yeah, go on. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> uh, that's what you, you're trying to get in, but the way is blocked, so you have to put the helmet on, and you ran through. I'm sorry, go ahead. All right, well, close. He had the penis right, of course. <laughs> a Roman helmet is <clears throat> while they are passed out, gently again with the passed out. <laughs> yeah, oh, come on. <clears throat> By the way, we while don't officially the... advocate rape. No, <laughs> just one. I don't think we advocated it at all. <laughs> I don't think we have to say that. <laughs> it's <laughs> but he talks about passed out people being. Taken yeah, oh no! While right. they are passed out, gently and inconspicuously. 
place your fleshy bag on their forehead while carefully laying down your dude meat down the bridge of their nose in, par- <laughs> in parallel fashion, thus making a Roman helmet. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> it's like the ultimate version of teabagging. Oh, my God, the Roman helmet. I better never wake up with one of those, I'll tell you. Oh, my God. Oh, man. You guys will be dead. Oh, my God. Roman helmet. Oh, oh my God. I just thought it was more like Roman hands. Mm-hmm. Where it's like moving around. You never know. You never know. That is not. Two minutes, huh? That is not. Two minutes, huh? That is not. All right. That is not sparkling. Hey. Where are we? Oh, my God. Yeah, it smells like science. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is smells like science, and what we're smelling is spider silk. <laughs> and uh, actually, wow. you know, it's not that new that we've been seeking to make spider silk. There's lots, yeah, like been, five different yeah. ways to do mm-hmm. it, but the newest way, which is now which actually producing spiders. enough spider silk uh, protein, is called. They're grafting it onto E. coli bacteria, which people eat, and then they produce it from their ass. God damn, you're so close. <laughs> that was on Spider Babe. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. no. Anyway, e. and it's per- they've been able to produce a half a ton of spider silk protein by doing oh, that. Wow. And they say they can easily make it a ton because this E. coli replicates very quickly. So oh, they're cool. now with their ability to do that, they are now going to be able to uh, produce it for mass uh, Production. Use. Production. Could, Thank you. Mass production. Could, could Without you, um, produce. If you could produce your own spider silk, could you like weave a Roman helmet for someone? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yeah. it would be bulletproof. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. No, but uh, I think that's really cool because they were trying to buy, they were making trad transgenic goats where they were oh boy what we dodged a bullet on that one (laughs) 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 like real they were making goats (laughs) they actually had grafted the spider silk protein gene into goats so they produced it in their milk and so then they had to strain the spider silk protein out of the milk but that was a uh, quite I remember a it was taken pro- forever, yeah. yeah and by the way, did. it made the cheese really stringy. It was bad. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, string cheese. Oh, hey, 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 so oh, hey. Thank oh, God that's oh, over. Damn. Okay. Uh, two minutes is too long when I interject, but <laughs> right now it's time for Yeah, tech talk. Tech talk. Tech talk. Tech talk. talk. <laughs> it's retard. <laughs> the retard hours. Yeah, tech talk. <laughs> Gotta, gotta talk, gotta talk tech, yeah. Okay, so oh, <laughs> Facebook bought Instagram. What this happened a few weeks? What ago. Instagram? Well, wait, they what? Bought, wait, I started with the wrong lead. I'm sorry. They bought. What are you, they, bought what's, they bought WhatsApp. Okay, sorry. <laughs> But they did buy Instagram a long time ago. Nah, right? Yeah, they did, yeah. Yeah, no, but uh, WhatsApp was a more recent acquisition. What? I don't yeah. know what I what's now, what's, what? WhatsApp is what? a popular uh, SMS alternative. So WhatsApp? WhatsApp, dude. What's it's like it's like a show from the 80s. Like right after Kids Incorporated was WhatsApp. But anyway, um, they spent <laughs> such Sounds a like large sugar. amount for it. <laughs> um they're they're basically paying nineteen billion dollars to buy WhatsApp, and the fact that like some people here don't even haven't even heard of that app, it's like what WhatsApp? Um, yeah, what? So why would they do that? Well, my the best users. theory I've heard proposed for why they would do this is they probably want the users because there are a lot of users that use WhatsApp every day, particularly in growing um, economies where like the internet is on mobile and spreading fast. So WhatsApp is mobile only; it's a replacement for SMS and SMS. Um, Text messaging is billions of dollars, like you know, a hundred and twenty billion dollar industry every year. And this is something people can use instead of paying like it's a dollar a year for service through WhatsApp, and you can send unlimited text. Whereas if you're paying a mobile provider for that, you would be spending on a monthly Doesn't basis. Doesn't Facebook have messaging already though? Yes, they do. But they don't have the popularity of WhatsApp in these emerging markets. Facebook isn't so, as popular or is something we've never heard of. What? This is, so this is kind of like um, what's sense. happening. Like we were saying, how um, like with decentralization of Bitcoin, the next billion. Oh, gee, too bad it was right. too long. I know. You're huh? buying, a, you're <laughs> yeah. buying your competition. Two minutes was too long for that one. Whew. All right. So anyway, <laughs> <Move> forward. 
<laughs> Morality and ethics. Paul's choice. Yeah, it was too long because uh, everyone interrupted me. That's part of it, Gwyneth Rapids. Where have you been the last year? <laughs> All right, so ethics and morality. You want to give any quick introduction on why you chose us or what we're going to talk uh, about? I chose it because we have a list of future ideas. I didn't know what to do, so I picked it. All right, that works. And uh, what, what, what are we going to be talking about today? Uh, ethics and morality. Thank and you. Support. Thank you. I'm glad you're here. Thank you. Uh, and <laughs> a lot, of, a lot of the aspects of ethics and, and morality, uh, we'll, we'll define And we'll talk it, about a- psychology uh, ethics of it. and morality as well. Yes. Uh, we'll talk about how it's used in business. How things uh, are ethical. How things are ethical, what it means to be ethical. How there's morality. Morals, how there's morality, the importance of morals. I'm sensing Kills, Don't scroll logic so fast. The brain and morals. <laughs> All right, we're going to start off with the first one. <laughs> this is your brain. This is your brain <laughs> on morals. Any questions? This is your brain. Brain on morals, and it's a frying pan. Okay, uh, what is ethics? What is morality? Are they basically the same? And what does it mean to you? What do you think, Paul? What, what's ethics, morality? How are they the same? Well, to me, ethics is the giver, the giver, the sandwich maker. Ethics is is the decision making of, of right, right and wrong. Mm. Um, I want and morality is kind of morality is kind of the, the right the and wrong. Thing, but I see morality as, as it's like, to me it's the same, really the same thing. But morals is like maybe like a like moral codes, like the philosophy that you follow. <laughs> How about, how about if we determine it as something like this, like uh, following a set of ethics is um, like what you do in a particular situation. Like you have an ethical call to do something over a particular circumstance. However, morals would be like your stance on overall ethics. Like it's the umbrella situation that says, okay, I have a moral code that means I'm going to choose to do what's ethically right in each situation that I'm called to do something. So basically what it comes down to is both moral and ethics have to do with your opinion of what is right. Or there could be, um, you know, an objective, uh, you know, like what, what's objectively right in certain yeah, situations. So, some, some situations like the objective ones is not what you think is right, but what... What you're told is right. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. See, and that's why we get, we get into religion, where morality and ethics are play a big role. But then a lot of religious religion is not moral or ethical. So that's why I was saying opinion. But no, I, I agree with you that there is areas where uh, you have morality, which is and ethics is can be defined by a group of people. But I don't know if there's any like this is moral, this is ethical. But I guess a lot of people could agree on what is. Well. A lot of times, too, there are gray areas because um, I think religion tends to paint things in a lot of black and white things ah, pretty often. That's a good point. Or we want to interpret it that way because we want it to be really clean cut, like um, thou shalt not kill, right? However, what happens when there's a war zone? And then what happens if you know that killing one person will save hundreds of others? Well, so you have these the problem gray with that, areas it's a where mistranslation. that's not always... It's not kill, it's murder. Right. Even though it says kill... That's a mistranslation. It actually means murder, death, murder. kill, <laughs> murder. Like, yeah. Okay. To so meditate and so yeah, so Kale, What do you think about ethics, morality? What? What's your review? I like it. Okay. <laughs> moving on. <laughs> no, I think. <laughs> Wait, moving on. The hasn't rung yet. <laughs> How can we move on? <laughs> I'm the host. Damn it! Train with the bell. I know. We can't, we can't, train by cannot the... go to next <laughs> check mark. No, no, I, I think more that, uh, deeper information. Let him talk. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually uh, think that uh, Ow, way back. that you can have objective <laughs> morals and ethics. Okay. Uh, but I know that religious people they define their ethics and their morals by what God, what they suppose God says. Yeah, usually the God is the morality. Right, in exactly. Most religions. That's what I'm saying. Is so they, when you're godless, that doesn't mean that you get rid of morality and ethics. And it means that you want to follow a code that's more evidence based and and you know not just because someone authority handed it down upon high and said right. it's wrong to do this. Well, this you know instead of taking it from some authority fictional or otherwise why don't we figure out what's actually right and wrong and yeah. analyze it well that's like humanists a lot of them go by the code good without god you mm-hmm. know <laughs> which is totally possible <laughs> Woo! let's talk yeah. about the moral codes like the golden rule or the ten commandments 
Uh, and actually, you know, something I said er- I, earlier, I said it's very subjective, and we'll get into that coming up in the next section, objective versus subjective. But um, the golden rule, the Ten Commandments, we always, no matter what religion you're in, there's always the good part of the religion, and it's usually the same, which is you're not causing harm to another person. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, that's kind of the basis of morality, but, I mean, let's see. Ten Commandments, what do we got? Don't kill, don't cheat, don't... Uh, Swear and say, God Don't damn it. Rape. Maybe we should have known these beforehand. Still. Well, the golden <laughs> rule. Okay, the golden rule is is uh, do unto others as you will do on do yourself. <laughs> right? And then there's the golden shower rule. Which is, um, <laughs> You're all golden. Right? <laughs> which is piss on everyone. Let me take Urban Dictionary again for that golden right, rule. Don't piss on someone unless you expect it in kind. <laughs> So you know it, it's it's a code to uh, <laughs> so people who are into that. To, to <laughs> yes, the golden. It, it's a, it's a code to follow a good life. You're doing good into other. Yeah. It's just to, so you you. It's teaching your kids not to be a jerk, you know, and you know it's to take the high ground, you know, to not to well, not to be a, a dick. Well, like a lot of th- okay, go on. I was just gonna say that uh, <laughs> you know I know the the New Testament they say that Jesus kind of uh, took those ten commandments and brought them down to love the God with your heart, mind, and strength, and your neighbor as yourself, and that kind of covers all the whole thing. And what's funny a, is the... Uh, go ahead, Daryl. <laughs> it's an you attempt know, to... I, I, <laughs> add my morals... Add, add, uh, uh, <laughs> pass on to you. <laughs> Thank you, sir. You're welcome. So I think... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, is an he doesn't have ethics. To, um, <laughs> try to make an objective for you, because... Um, it's kind of like a rule of thumb, like a heuristic to figure out, like in most cases, how do you figure out what the right and ethical thing is to do? Well, take yourself out of the situation and think about what you would appreciate someone else doing for you. Like if you have to make a decision regarding someone's safety, for example, and you're thinking about it from the perspective of, well, it's a pain in the ass to make sure they're safe or whatever, you can step outside yourself and apply the golden rule and say, okay, now if I were that person... Would I really appreciate it if someone took their time to make me safe? You know. Strangely, though, that doesn't work with golden showers. <laughs> no, but I'm serious here. Because if you like golden showers, you'll be right. like, oh, would I like it if somebody peed on me? I would, so I'm going to go pee on that person. <laughs> <laughs> so it kind of works, but it kind of doesn't work. That's why it's a heuristic. It yeah. doesn't that always might work. work in court. Well, there's also the five, uh, five precepts, which... Uh, I don't think they allow golden showers. And I undertake... Court. <laughs> farting when I am in a podcast. No way. I guess I guess that well, is part of the golden rule is, is you kind of assume everyone else thinks the way you do, and that's the part that you're saying is a weakness. Of. Yeah, but it's I mean there is kind of, and that's what we're going to get to on subjective and objective next. Well, so let's hit the five precepts. The right five precepts is uh, well, it's basically the ten commandments, but for five of them. <laughs> they're, but, the, they're the good ones. For, they're not like for Buddhism. Can't say God. This is the Buddhism. Way. So it's. Um, I don't remember anything I'm talking about. Don't head. kill. Like sex, kill. Don't kill. Lie, don't take. Adultery. Don't steal. Don't kill. Oh, Envy. Don't be sexually misconductory. <laughs> Whatever. Don't lie and do not have fermented drinks. Yeah, no drinking. Hot headiness. <laughs> yeah. So no boozing. Drunk. No boozing or boozing or losing or boozing or cruising. So, uh, <laughs> there's a, <laughs> there's I know, a all those are pretty drinking. good except for the drinking. <laughs> one. What? Thou shalt not drive us around aimlessly. Yeah, you know, the and drinking is like, chicks. it's like we're Mormons or something. It, it kind of like, does always come, and that's what, it always, it seems like there's all good, no killing and no lying, and then, uh, let's move I have on. something to say about that, but that's all right. Just, well, we're moving on. It subje- might come up. This actually fits with this. Okay. Subjective and objective. Okay. Uh, ideas of morality. Now, this is a good example. In the five precepts, it says, you know, I think we can pretty much say objectively killing, that's that's objective. And then you get into don't lie, that's pretty much objective too. I mean, these are two things you don't want to do. Uh, what are they, uh, sexual misconduct? But are they absolutes, well, though? No, and there, that's so the, that's the time, thing is there are, there are no absolutes. Killing can be justified. Right? That's the problem that that uh, religious people always fall into is that they're thinking the, that there are absolutes. Well, right? as much as I like to you know say like religion isn't all it's cracked up to be, I, I wouldn't want to paint with that white of a brush. You know, like saying I all of them are oh stuck every on freaking one of them. All right, fine. <laughs> <laughs> now <laughs> it's a big brush. But yeah. then you got, but, but still, on an objective basis, and it's we're not talking about absolutes. We're saying that 
we're, we're saying that it's killing is pretty much usually Speaking a bad thing. Absolute, you're not supposed to yeah, drink it when. An objective. The vodka. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Moving on. So, um, <laughs> well, like, like, like Daryl mentioned about a war zone. Thou shalt not kill. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, I know it's super murder, but mm-hmm. if you just take it as just killing, murder. if you're a soldier and you're in a war and you kill somebody, murder. it's subjective. Because you but isn't that murder? You th- but you think you're no. doing the right thing isn't because that you're defending you, your country. It's your still freedom, murder if you kill somebody it's in pretty, a war zone. It's, it's like killing, killing, shaking his head. Oh, yeah, if, you're going, no. if you're going, in, okay, <laughs> you're going in to kill a terrorist, right? Okay. Yeah, what about the guys who took that's, Osama bin Laden? It's okay that's because you're killing a bad guy, isn't it? No, because we're premeditated. We, you we planned the whole already, mission. We already had authorization to kill him. So if it's authorized by your by mob your boss, country. it's not, no, it's not by murder. your country. But then, who gives the objective authority to a country to say that they're better than an organized crime or, uh, organization? I mean, they're I both organizations made of humans, right? Now, one's considered criminal by the other. So which one's actually objective? So what if right? the, the one that's in power? So the one that's in power. So okay. so if so the ones in power could put a hit on you, and you would say it's not murder. No, it would not be. I I wouldn't okay. like it, but it would not be murder. Wow, I I find that to be totally against. It's just semantics. Ob- objective. It's a uh, bad thing. Morals. It's a bad thing, but it would not be murder. It would not by law because the right. the organization defines. See, we the decide law. as a society so, what our rules are, right. and if we let the the commander in chief authorize the killing of someone, it right. is killing, but it is not murder. Well, okay. Subjectively, I think you're on the right track. That, like, yeah, you can't call it murder because then the legal system would be all screwed up, and all like a lot of our military would be on trial right now. That's what I'm saying. But uh, we're talking about objectively, like these some of these concepts about premeditation and how murder is defined in today's legal system in the United States doesn't necessarily call to what was being talked about in the Ten Commandments. So I'm saying this no. idea between killing and murder. Um, the like the concept of premeditated murder might not have been all that well defined. So I, I the think Nazis you, okay killing the Jews? I would say Whoa. no. Yeah, I brought that in. I brought it in. <laughs> um, That's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> wow. <laughs> no, the thing is, is that well, well, it's Taylor it, it was not murder. You just seen Joey's eyes bug out right after Paul said that. That was um, that was kind of cool. I don't. I don't. I do not agree with the Holocaust. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. <laughs> you're very welcome. <laughs> I'm so glad you don't. <laughs> Just to be on the record. Okay, uh, so this was a perfect exa- example of how ethics and morality can be very subjective. Well, see, the thing sure. is, is that we murder want to extend? would be un- unauthorized I'm gonna killing. Extend. I'm going to use my extent on this. All right. Okay, okay right. so... Thou shall not lie. The idea, and this is a perfect example of how all of morality is really subjective. I mean, we can say it's subjective because we all are human and have the same basic idea about it, for the most part, unless we're really crazy in the head, for the most part. But there's so many different levels of it. Right. It's objective to the person, but not to the whole, like the whole society. Well, so that you may have a person who's like so religious that the Ten Commandments is, is the law. So to them, that's objective. We'll see. To that person. But, 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 it may, but it's not objective to all. But, but that's what I'm saying. Objective, the whole idea of objective means it's the same to everybody in some respect. And so the idea that morality, the idea, and that's what I'm saying, the idea of thou shalt not kill, mm-hmm. most people are good with that. But yeah. then it comes to murder, not murder, uh, on the war, that's the subjective part. So I think we can say as a whole, there is this basic golden rule, uh, Ten Commandments, it's all, they all come down to the same ideals. Uh, that we that we agree with that don't be mean don't steal do on to others you know all that stuff is the objective part yeah. but when you get to the minutia of it we're looking at subjective well, so and that's why you always have to have gen I think you have to approach it as a generality and as, uh, even though I'm arguing with Kale about like what I think the objective is um, that's more of an academic pursuit and you know we're here to do that well, that's as what well I'm saying we, but the subjective is yeah. what really matters to everybody in their day to day lives. So, uh, yeah. you know, generally killing unless on a battlefield is what most m- Americans, at least, would say is, is the right way to approach thou shalt not kill. I yeah. think, and I think you, 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 <laughs> all right, the brain and morals. So, 
What happens uh, if your bra- you have some sort of uh, tumor and <laughs> you are not moral? Was that it? Do you have to and have over. a tumor? No. Well, well, that's what I'm saying. That's exactly what I'm saying. Because are you responsible? Are well, yeah. That's kind of that's part like of it. What if it's just up to your brain? Oh, chemistry like if, or like if the shooter uh, on will, the Texas Tower? Like a blind rage. Oh, I'm talking about the Texas Tower. The, yeah. the idea that uh, do we have is is our morality based on our brain structure? Well, on uh, the the video which we can post in the or show notes will. was pretty cool because it would take um, cat scans based on our brain of of people what dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. that's all I was saying so they give them questions <laughs> and situations while they were getting a CAT scan and it was um, they give them situations of like somebody uh, putting right powder in someone's drink and the first one is you don't know what they're putting in or the person doesn't know what they're putting in and the other one is they shows them putting in uh, the powder but they now they know what they're putting in and one thing one time you think it's sugar and the other time it's poison but both points they die all right so, the ones that um, they knew that they were going to be murdered and stuff had a certain is like on, right above your right ear. I forget what it was area called. Had a certain pattern. Yeah. And then the ones that you didn't think that they didn't know, so it was like kind of okay, different sort of ethics to it. It had a different pattern to it, different shape. So it actually had when you when the person knew that um, morally this is wrong, it had one pattern. When they thought it was okay, it had a different pattern. So there was actually a different different brain pattern in your in your brain uh, when it comes to the ethics and the morals. So we know the brain is actually, but not based it's on physically doing something. But wait, it's not based on what is good or bad. It's what you think. Yeah, is what good you or think bad. it actually it's based a different on your a different brain. Right, way, and it goes back to the movement. subjective things and all that. So that's it's the right temporal parietal junction. Bingo. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. There we go. So um, I, I think that experiment was interesting, and I liked uh, how they framed it when they were describing that uh, action of someone putting white powder into their coffee, because they said it's hard to pass a moral judgment on it unless you know what the white substance is that they're using and whose coffee it is, right? Like if they're just putting sugar into their own coffee, there's no moral judgment to be made. But once you find out it's poison in someone else's coffee, then that's a judgment. <laughs> Yet, poison in your own coffee would be another judgment, like you're judging them for wanting to commit suicide, right? Uh, or if they don't know it's poison and they put it in their own coffee, then you have a moral judgment about whoever switched the poison with the sugar, mm-hmm. right? Or is it a person an idiot because they grabbed the rat poison instead of the sugar? Then you would be passing judgment no, on them for being on, an idiot. No, um, that was on that Parton movie. <laughs> Oh, that's right. Nine to five. <laughs> nine to five. <laughs> yeah. that's Working hilarious. nine to five. Well, I like where you're going with, like, with, the, with the tumors. Because <laughs> it's not a tumor. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, there we go. Um, because like you look at uh, cases where people are let off or, or uh, a lesson sentence based off of you know being psycho, being crazy. Well, that's the whole thing. I mean, you're showing morality as part of the brain. So, uh, what if you have a deficiency of the brain, which doesn't allow you to be as moral? And then you wouldn't be able to judge right from wrong. Right. And the, another thing that they mentioned in that study is that they said that uh, the difference in the two patterns between when you're judging right or wrong, um, that difference narrows in some people. And those people would tend to um, not judge people as harshly or they would just judge everyone harshly like whether or not something's an accident like someone accidentally kills someone versus someone intentionally kills someone they would bring the punishment closer together when that region of the brain responds more similarly to each action moral mm-hmm. psychology so uh paul what do you think about moral psychology i remember what that was <laughs> I wish. Uh, I let me start out. There was, oh. I could like springboard while you're collecting that. Um, just just say that. Um, you need more than four minutes. Part of the psychology four is minutes. that. Um, where does this start from? You know, is that because we have these different patterns in our brain? Is that something that we're born with and we're born to judge people's actions, or is it something that we learn from society as we yep. get older? As with everything, it's always a combination. Yeah. Yeah, but it's it's in false dichotomy I presented there. Yeah. Pretty it much, is, it is a continuum. <laughs> yeah, but it's true. It is is to me. It's it is learned. It's from your parents. It's from your culture. It's from your surroundings and from your biology and, and what you believe in. You know, uh, like the, I think one of the examples you had in there is um, 
you know, you could believe, you can look up anything on the internet. You could have any sort of beliefs, uh, any conspiracy theory that you can think of. Somebody else thinks the same thing. You Google yeah. it on, you put on, you put in Google, and you're going to find articles all about what. Even if it's the wackiest thing, someone else is going to believe it as well. So in the, it's it's funny how you have different. You're not, you may not be in the same culture, um, but you do have the same you know psychology makeup with them. Well, and what's interesting about that, Kale and I are reading a very good book right now by Michio Kaku called "The Future of the Brain" or "The Mind," right? Mind. Yeah, and uh, one of the parts he talks about is the difference between consciousness of an animal, like a mammal, and and a human, mm. human mammal. And part of what he discusses is the idea that we have the ability to empathize with other um, people. And that's kind of where our morality really comes from. It's part of our prefrontal cortex, because not only can we picture other people as separate entities from us, but we can also, um, in our heads, visualize from their point of view. We can create a model of the world as if we were them and then put ourselves in that position. And because of that, we have the ability to empathize and therefore we have, that's kind of where morality comes from. That's where the golden rule comes from. Yeah, Yeah. and and if you don't have the ability to empathize, you can't. Right. Our our ethics and morals, it also depends. That's why you'd be a psychopath. It depends (laughs) on your relationship with the people. Like I've I've been on the freeway or down the street and a car gets hit. And I mean, it's not a total major accident stuff. I just keep going. But if it, if it was you and you guys, I'd stop, no matter sure, what the fender sure. bender was or anything. So, you know, the closer you are with somebody, right. the more the more your ethics and morals really come in play with, sure. with your decisions with them. And I think that this really does come from the way that we've evolved. Um, and that society reinforces morality due to the fact that we have morality already in us. I kind of think that if this were a chicken and egg situation, that really the brain structure uh, to emulate morality came first. Because as people and as social animals, we grant agency to things. Whether or not they're alive, we can grant agency to anything that moves. And that's part of a survival instinct. And having judgment factors in there is also part of what? (laughs) Are you talking about the gecko leaf? No, I was thinking about a penis, how it could move, therefore you grant agency to it. But no, but go ahead. You ask. That's, that's alive. It doesn't think for it. Oh, it does think for itself. I like, knew it. No. It has morals. So um, so the thing is, uh, it's it part of our needs. social structure in that it we... Has no morals. Only I needs. think it's part of a protection mechanism Animals. that we want to try to anticipate what other agents around us are going to do. And that makes it, allows us to make judgments about them. Like, if you're acting kind towards me, I can be friendly in return, but if you're acting hostile toward me, I'm going to judge you and think that you're... So this one, uh, this one's pretty good. This is uh, media effect. How does media affect ethics and morals? Because... uh, Oh, here we go. Slamming the media again. (laughs) the media. Well, no, media media could be anything. No, no, no. That's how that's how I saw it. It could be... No, no. (laughs) I'm talking about like t- everything, TV, Social music, media, yeah. TV, music, and I, that's why I think because where my brain went on this was the freaking FCC trying to say, oh, that's not moral just because you said a bad word on TV, mm-hmm. when that has nothing to really do with morality. So I don't know. What do you guys think? Well, media it has is two different things. One, it's like the media is trying to protect people from bad words. From new oh. and stuff, you know, and that's the grandma in the Midwest that you know Do it for will the have children. a heart attack. Oh, I saw the deep enough to see Paul something. Yeah. No, wait, I mean, but uh, then on the other hand, uh, Paul, Janet Jackson. Jackson, the media, not not the media, it's just the it. news, but the media, media out there, you know, changes our morals. Look at watching um, reality shows and how you watch uh, like Sixteen and Pregnant, and how they have some struggle, but then they do okay part of the story you know, so it's 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 making making some maybe ethical decisions okay so you have young people watching this and learning from that and getting ethical and moral values from those people not from their parents but from the 16 and pregnant from honey boo boo from commercials showing everyone in tight bikinis and and you have but to then, have washboard abs and you know but extends do those but go then together get, the bikinis yeah. and the washboard abs but then you get the same problem with, re, with reality <laughs> tv where it's causing an 
opposite effect because a lot of what reality TV is you like watching it because you like saying oh look at that person do that and, oh I can't that believe they're wreck. doing that and look at that because it makes you feel better because you're judging that's why I go you're to being, Walmart it's like <laughs> well, yeah. because it makes you, you feel, feel like, like down your, your life look isn't at so bad <laughs> right exactly but that's almost an unmoral thing because you it's it's negative judging and to make your to make yourself feel better right. it's like oh look at honey boo boo oh, oh, makes me laugh well, cause those, isn't that like one of the best remedies is like if you think you've got it bad just find someone who has it worse. Well, that's just it. It's a false remedy, like, if though. If you think it's you're not... stupid, watch some reality programming and find out yeah. how stupid really Well, yeah, be. but that's the thing. is, It's not... It's it's because I have to teach this to kids all the time. It's like, you're making someone else feel bad or you see someone else feel bad. It's not actually going to make you better on right. the long term. You've got to... So, in some ways, it's not... Maybe, maybe it's the wrong direction. Maybe it's not immoral, but it's not exactly the best thing for society. Yet, we eat it up because we love to judge, especially in America. We're very judgmental people. So yeah. shift don't judge, but that's what. But, but it's kind of uh, you know, being judgmental. I think is kind of human nature too. So maybe yeah. we give into it more. I think America than, does give into it a lot more actually. Yeah, but yeah. but back to what I said before, I don't think it should be censored or stopped or anything like that. I mean, I think media and information should be open and free, and the people have to learn to decide what to watch and what not to watch. You don't type in bizarre sex acts into Google. You just don't. <laughs> With a fork. Then no. Uh, but I think there has to be some. As a society, we've decided what our ethics are, like for America, and I I, I don't think that everything should just be free reign on television and stuff because I, I think for the children, <laughs> we do have to protect them from seeing certain things. I know it's our job um, to no, stop you're right, them, but to have it just yeah. free out there, it, it's mm, they're yeah. taking the decision from us to. To uh, to block them from it. I'm not going to give you a, but a bad time about either way. They'll find it anyways. I think that there are certain forums where things ought to be clear. That's I think that's a better way to look at it. You need certain things in certain. It's kind of like Netflix You're kids. Expect- you know, like if they yeah. start putting yeah. the surprise on Netflix kids, <laughs> that would be very out of place. Yeah, 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 yeah I have that expectations that. for that. Exactly for that. Uh, medium. Like have a place for them, but then don't censor everybody are you, across the board. Yeah. Are you okay. standing? I, no, no, you're no, just no, finishing. No. Okay, then let's talk about some ethical theories, Paul. Well, there are various eco- <laughs> ethical theories and, and morals. Uh, one of them is virtue. Virtue is... Um, hey, click the button there. The dummies thing. I, it's frozen. <laughs> not <laughs> 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 So the virtue thing is like something to do with like doing ethical things because of courage and virtuous. Would you appreciate uh, it if I employed some editing to this segment? No, because no. I okay. think it's awesome. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's it's sorry. It's Mike, living out the life and, and acting rightly. You know, you're, you're de- demonstrating acts of virtue like uh, compassion, wisdom, courage. Um, so this is almost uh, good. Good things. So what people. we're doing is we're kind of breaking down the idea of ethics yeah. and morality because there's also uh, utilitarianism. Utilitarianism. Oh, utilitarianism. I knew that. Yeah, and the utilitarianism is like is really in like business ethics. Where um, an oxymoron? Yes, you're trying to you're trying to bring the Political most amount ethics. of happiness, <laughs> but minimizing the amount of suffering. No such thing. And in like business ethics, which I don't know if we're going to get into cultures. No, in business ethics, one example would be like um, like Apple. How they've changed? They're trying to get more of their products built here, but. Uh, you want these high end products? They don't seem or, to be trying very hard. Not trying. Or let's say let's say Walmart. On it. Let's say Walmart. You want you go to Walmart. You get cheap clothes. You get good prices and all that. But on the back end, those are being made in third world countries in horrible conditions, and Sweatshops. it's like really Sometimes bad. But Walmart has to make the decision of all these people in America want their cheap clothes, and if we make it here, it'll be way too much money. They won't buy it. It won't make them happy. You want to buy cheap clothes and still have money to buy comic books or something. So they'll. They'll take the chance on making the sweatshops and taking the flack for that because it makes their customers happy. Right. And in some ways, you know, I think everyone votes with their dollars. So it's a lot like the argument I would make about the media being all about reality TV and being kind of dumbed down. But it's in a way what we made it. You know, like if certain shows get big ratings, that means people are watching. It might not be you specifically or me specifically, but someone's watching. And therefore, that kind of stuff's going to get made. So if. Somebody offers the really inexpensive uh, stuff manufactured in China, then 
peop- someone's going to buy it because it's less money. You know, and I think this brings up another interesting concept, which is ethics seems to have the like magnetism or gravity seems to get less at a lesser at a distance. Like, yeah. yeah, if if my next door neighbor was making me clothes and like it was a sweatshop, I'd be like, whoa, that's not cool. Exactly. Or if it was my my nephew or something. But yeah. if it's some kid in China and I kind of don't really know about it because it's through Walmart and all that. That's all right. I'll get some clothes. Well, one thing that can be said about that whole thing, too, is that, like, yeah, even though uh, workers in these countries are getting paid so little, at least they have a job. And that's not saying a lot. And that's not justifying what they're doing because they are taking advantage of these people. Oh, yeah. When those guys find all my gold in Lord of the Rings online, I appreciated that. (laughs) You know, when Joey was talking about that, you know, the distance, that's very true because they – I read – I read an article recently that proved basically that every single one of us has been a beneficiary of slavery sure, nowadays sure. here today with rare earth elements which are being yeah. mined in the Congo which yeah. are being mi- mined in Tanzania Blood all these places exactly those things and we are all a beneficiary <laughs> of slavery uh, I'm going to extend this because I wanted to bring up one thing that So you're pro slavery no, I'm not. <laughs> well, you wanted to. All right, I've just, always been against Just slavery. so you know, incoherent <laughs> ramblings does not condone slavery. Even when it smells. <laughs> but we are pro Nazi, according to. No! Oh, no! no! I misunderstood what you said earlier. I thought you said something about. You know, oh, no! Man. No! Was, that was. <laughs> But, you know, that, that is uh, back self, to what Ken was talking about. Anyway, I remember there's a lot okay, I, I take of it all people. Back. We're fine. We're all good. <laughs> there's there's the acronym NIM, not in my backyard. Yeah. It's hey. like, we need yeah. more jails. We hey, who used prisoners. their extends? But if people want more jails. They got to put these people away, but they don't want it in their backyard. I thought that meant you didn't want anal sex. That is another one. <laughs> so part of why I extended this is I said that there can be a tipping point. Um, and I remember last time I was selecting a phone. I was already pretty fond of the Moto X. But every time I looked at another phone and I was starting to think, like, well, this other one has a higher res screen, it's got a little bit more of this, a little more of that, the thing I kept coming back to is I was thinking to myself, the Moto X made in America, mm-hmm. and they made a point of that. They said, we're going to manufacture these damn things in Texas. And I'm like, cool, support the With Mexican immigrants. Phone. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it might be true. But still, that was- <laughs> But that, oh but that was a tipping point for me. So yeah. I think that kind of thing does make a difference sometimes. Yeah, no, it's true. Now, if it had been it's a crappy make you feel phone good. that wasn't competitive with anyone else, I wouldn't have bought it just because it was made in America. Yeah. But because I had this debate, I was like, okay, Korean-made phone or American-made phone? I went with the American one. Well, yeah. and, and a lot of um, a lot of times they're trying to make you feel good doing right. that. Like we have the uh, uh, buy local holiday or whatever after... Yeah. Black Thursday, no, mm-hmm. Black, right. Black Friday, <laughs> but uh, you know, and it's like you know, buy local, buy local. It's like yes, but it's like two times the price of things. <laughs> Sometimes it is. Yeah. I can't afford that, <laughs> so, so I buy unlocal. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so what is the importance of ethics and morality? I mean, why even have them? What's the point? Well, I think without ethics and morals, we'll have just total anarchy. Yeah, but that nobody fun. Would, nobody would care. <laughs> Like in business, Are nobody you high? would. We, we, we may have sweatshops, and if we didn't have morals and ethics, we still have children working in uh, factories. In factories now we'd have, right. of course. Like uh, I said, it's fun. Well, part of it is like if you know if there weren't morals and ethics, our lives would be a lot different. Um, you right. can say that a lot of people do skirt around morals and ethics. But they aren't able to like club us to death in the middle of the street for the most part, unless maybe we're protesting. Then they have a quote right to do that, like lightsabers but, in the. But they Ukraine. usually won't club you to death. They'll just like break a few bones and send you to prison for a little while. But I digress. The truth is, if you think about people who do not have a good grasp on moral and ethics, then you're usually thinking about criminals or at least people you don't want to be around. Or politicians. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, on a lesser extent, have but to yes. Jump in there. But, Bankers. But the fact is... Nazis. It, <laughs> the fact is... People is that, who support Nazis. Looking at you, Paul. Us. Oh, not you. I okay, support yeah. Nazis. <laughs> Man, you're, you're listening to a different podcast, Daryl. You know? Okay, I'll stop. I may be part German, <laughs> but I'm not that German. <laughs> anyway... <laughs> 
What the hell was I saying? I have no freaking no idea. You're you thinking of criminals. Oh, I was saying that if there were no ethics and morality, then it would be like having all these criminals and politicians all around all the time. That would suck. Well, like doctors with a hippopotamus oath. <laughs> I mean, with the- <laughs> <laughs> hungry, hungry hippo. I don't see that. <laughs> it's the hungry, hungry hippo. Oh, Hippocampus. Hippocratic. <laughs> that's it. Hungry, hungry Hippocratic oath. They're working in the ER. I didn't mean it. They're working in the ER. Just oh, chilling. Hippocratic oath. Guy comes okay. in, got his arm chopped off. It's sitting there. He's bleeding to death. And he's like, doctor could be like, mm, I want a break. <laughs> right. I'll be, I'll be with you in fifteen. Let me, let me finish my smoke or something. Well, my uncle uh, lost his legs uh, when he was a kid in the Ooh. early 1900s in a train accident. Actually, only lost his toes. But uh, the doctor kept amputating higher and higher up because every time he amputated, he got more money from the insurance company, the train insurance company. That really? Awful. That is really kidding, what happened. Really. And so it, yeah. it was finally... How old was he? He was like 10, nine, oh my or God. probably wow. less, actually. And so uh, it finally got to the knees, and the dad said, and the doctor's like, I got to do more, he's going to die. And the dad's like, and then he'll die. Okay, well, he didn't. I don't in any way condone what that doctor did. And I've heard this story a long time ago. That's why I'm not going through the shock factor you guys are. But seriously, that story shocked me when yeah. he first told me about it. And he's, you know, he was telling me this as an old man. He had gone his whole life with no legs, mm-hmm. like not even down to the knees or anything. Like he he had um, thigh stumps, yeah. you know, yeah. and like f- false legs. So don't get me wrong. This is not endorsed in any way. However, I want to paint the idea that even though something like that is terrible, it might not be as black and white as it sounds. True. Because when was this done? During the Depression, right? Uh, no, before the Depression. Before the Depression. It must have been because well, he was born. Yeah, but, you know, you can create a story that might throw a touch of gray into the situation. True. Like, what if this guy, this doctor, had starving children at home and had no way to fend for them? Yeah. And that was his way of feeding his family. Horrible as it is. Well, that's he's choosing someone unethical. closer to him. Unethical, for sure. But it does paint the idea that this isn't exactly binary. It's not pure evil versus pure good. Do you want to extend? I can't. Can't? Do you want more? Anyone want to extend? Not me, so I kind of no. think this section might need it after that. All right, that. extend it. Continue. All right. Yeah, and I, think that, and I think that actually brings up a really good point, though, is that you may do things that, from your point of view are not immoral or you think are not very immoral but from another point of view to another person might be very exactly very yeah. immoral. it's like the man stealing groceries yeah you know ethically you're it's wrong you're stealing from the grocery store but you're stealing milk and bread and eggs and cheese to feed your kids at home yeah it may there's some different ethics there that no i don't i don't think it is different ethics i think what it is is that people will give up their ethics when it comes to them and theirs. Exactly. Yeah. The kinship will, factor. No, but, but it, my, it's, my it's, ethics... It's because first, it ex- you have yourself, and then it extends to your family, and then your close friends, and yeah. you, re- you know, and from there out. And it's, they've shown through studies that, you know, there's different levels of unethicacy, mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know, that you will go to the closer in it is oh, to yeah. you. Oh, but, yeah. But if you can empathize with them, if you feel for them... You may have different ethics, even for a total stranger. And that's why you, people who, I think, make choices to be unethical and immoral try not to do that. They do not em- try to emphasize They keep that uh, as separate from them yeah. as possible. I think I'm just saying that's big. not... They don't think they're being ethical. They're just being selfish for them, their, no, I mean, themselves. Like, I mean, like, it's when you're mm. when you're looking at the people outside, not the person stealing it, but you yourself... Yeah. Even if you're not close, that you to, would, even you you're would close not to them. look as bad on them for that. Yes, well, of course. Oh, of course. This, which is why when we have like a jury and a trial, there's twelve mm-hmm. people because yeah. everybody has a different idea and feels different, you know, ethically, of what the person may have done. Gosh, do we have another extend? Does. What's the next section? The next well, section. Can, I'm sure we can go into whatever you so want to say. Darryl, ethical dilemmas the... between cult. We cannot break the rules. Okay, and, so this, is this wrong. actually fits. This actually fits. Okay, so okay. it'll work. Okay, we'll go. Ethical dilemmas between cultures. Between cultures, all right. Yeah, so you're. Uh, so I was going to say that, like, culturally and in society, this is uh, one of the things where, like, I think we had evolved with this kinship factor that 
affects our ethics. Like we would do something, we would sooner do something unethical to someone we don't know versus someone we do know. Okay, yeah. And um, that's part of how like evolution has, like we weren't, we didn't evolve to be a citizen of the world necessarily because that's relatively new in society. So what we've actually done is that we we evolved this kinship so that we would protect our own. And unfortunately, that means screw the people from the tribe next door because we don't care about them, right? In fact, we would rather see harm done to them than harm done to any of yeah, ours. But the way that I think it has to further evolve, either by forcing ourselves to look at things differently or just keep being a citizen of the world long enough that our brains actually catch up with us, is I think we need to learn that everyone's our kin. And we have to stop worrying about, like, just because we need to protect people close to us doesn't mean we need to screw our neighbor, right? So I think we can mm. keep the first part of that yeah. but eliminate the second. Didn't we say something about that where we were reading and somebody was saying, the world is my home? What was that from? I don't know, but it sounds very tree hugger. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, give peace a chance. Oh, oh, the world's my home. Probably Hillary Clinton. But no, that's, <laughs> that's a very, uh, very interesting way of looking at ethics between cultures because I was seeing it as something different but yeah the problem being that uh, we don't look we don't look kindly on their kind <laughs> around yeah. these parts the world is full of racists but and that's just it because the further they are away from you the the, the more different they are the more and the further their ideals are also because we we have a xenophobia about it as well it's like oh they believe in a different god they believe in a different moral code than we do they believe in um, like the know, infidels you know, we're the infidels to um, Muslims, yeah. To the, um, and the, a lot of it has to do who with we fighting Muslims, not the no, Muslims. Extreme. Well, oh, Al Qaeda. Al Qaeda. I'm sorry. Yeah. We're, we're not. not, not all you're Muslims. not. Okay. All right. Just so you <laughs> we're know, not we're, we're not against Muslims. We, <laughs> we, we are we're guys. We're so hosed after this. I we, know. Hey, <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> We're I have a black extremists. friend who's a Muslim. Oh my god! You did not just say <laughs> okay. that. Okay. <laughs> so because of that, it gives me the right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh, god. Oh, that's awesome. He's your homie. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh, <what the> <laughs> oh, oh. Holy crap, Ola! <laughs> homie. This is the episode that put the hit on incoherent rap. <laughs> See, that's the whole difference with other cultures. If we were in a Muslim country, we would be getting stoned tomorrow. Or I whenever think, this well, comes I out. Think they I'm getting stoned. We're going to Joe's. We're going to Ralph's house. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, no. I mean, you said uh, boned. But in other what? In other countries, uh, you know, they wow. they have they might have extremist views that to us don't mean much. You know, uh, and we might see things that are extreme to us and doesn't mean much to the other people, like uh, women driving. You know, there's that whole issue in one of the countries. <laughs> Why are you flicking Iran. me off? I'm Iran, right. That's Just right. so you know, Iran, right? we yeah. like women. We do. A we do. lot. In fact, I have a black woman Muslim. <laughs> Red. Oh, God. All right, moving on. Uh, She's your homie. What would you do? What would you do? Where do your ethics and morals come from? I have no... Not from this podcast. <laughs> Holy crap. Not from you guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Holy crap. Well, I think when I it comes it from to watching it, you. My, my ethics and morals, um, the beginnings of it, the foundation comes from my parents and from friends and my culture, which would be my immediate family and who I'm around. So it's who I grew up with. Your homies. My homies. Yeah. My homies. I, my my morals and ethics, um, you know, having studied philosophy, I, I've seen lots of different, uh, you know, I guess excuses for morals and ethics, what I would call them anyway. And the it, don't fit basically school. what I'm looking at is what is a generalization that we almost everybody, all, that's what the key is, almost everybody can agree on, which is basically... You don't kill other people who you you, you shouldn't don't like. <laughs> you you don't shouldn't murder, murder people. Yes. You shouldn't murder people. You shouldn't steal people. You shouldn't steal, steal people's things. things. <laughs> you shouldn't own people too. Don't well, steal own. That's what I mean. We own. hear it. In <laughs> Rapids, do not endorse slavery. <laughs> That's Twelve what I'm years saying, God damn it. <laughs> the only slaves I condone are my kids. 
Oh, and wow. Those are legal. Yes. And that's that's basically, you know, don't do anything to somebody that they wouldn't want done to themselves. Like go and, showers. Right. <laughs> and, Almost anybody. Oh. Well, and I won't do thing. I hope that they won't do the things that I don't want. So what are you doing? There are, there are some free. differences. I mean, like you know, maybe someone who wants to kill themselves doesn't want you to stop them. That's why I said a general. Yeah, okay, so general. Daryl, what about your? Where are your morals? Um, Man, I think my morals have changed over the years, and maybe you know, oh, probably yeah. for the better, because I used to be more Christian, moralistic about those kinds of things. Then I realized that certain moral codes that they have just don't make sense. Um, in the overall world, so Logically. you know things like honoring the Sabbath and stuff like that. I used to sometimes have a little bit of guilt that I didn't do that, but then now I realize, oh, dude, Aussies matter. banned with us. <laughs> Honor the oh, Sabbath. Black Sabbath. <laughs> so, um, so I think like I I haven't been afraid to take a step back from my moral code and reevaluate them and kind of let them evolve over time. And I do want to try to arrive at like Kale was aiming for the kind of general consensus what everyone can agree on make sure that your morals aren't going to impede on other people's rights that's the, like yes. that's what i was trying to say yes definitely okay. i um i think i differ from a lot of the people here in that most of my morals i we think don't take kindly to that. <laughs> no seriously is that most of my morals actually come from my ass your ass you know somehow that's there's a symmetry to that <laughs> <sighs> Poop. People order our patties. So <laughs> your morals are shit. Pretty much. Okay. No, my morals came from my family, of course, and uh, I, I was actually raised uh, slightly Catholic, so that probably helped a little until it got weird. <laughs> you know. So if you're slightly Catholic, Those damn you just one hail mary is that damn priest. <laughs> well, that was weird. But yeah, I mean, you, you, we, I learned, you know, the good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> sounds really bad. Well, it, from the priest. As, as a parent, we want to raise raise our children. He's you work and he's blocked the all the rest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Hey, and now I understand why you relate your morals to your ass. <laughs> yeah. oh. 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 Thanks for oh, going yeah. there, girl. Thank Give you. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise Jesus! So <laughs> we offended yet? You gotta, you gotta offend whoever's left. Paul, how is you it? Damn how, Zoranastrians! How is what? <laughs> Freaking Canadians! <laughs> how, how is it that our our episode on morals and ethics is like the most offensive episode we have ever made in the history of incoherent rambling? <laughs> I think that's. I think there's a propos there. You know? Yeah. Okay. Oh man. Uh, Oh, let's talk what? about yes. animals. Ethical treatment of animals. This is this is one I think we can all get behind, except that might be. <laughs> oh, <laughs> don't say that. Oh, no. That's we, all right in some cultures, but not this one. We at Angel Hair oh, Rambling oh, do not do not condone, condone pedophilia with animals. animals. <laughs> in fact, pedophilia. I have a black <laughs> woman female sheep for pets. I'm friend pets. <laughs> From a Muslim country. <laughs> and you know what? She's your homie. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> Babe. <laughs> That'll do, Daryl. That'll do. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and you know. I'm oh, actually. That was good. <laughs> 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 Your face is Don't right here, huh? Don't hurt oh. animals. <laughs> yes. Speaking of raping dogs. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What? <laughs> if we're gonna say any good thing, Chuck, about, Chuck, about, the about, Chuck the monkey. Chuck <laughs> the monkey. Don't chuck the monkey. Is I, I hurt. Don't go to SeaWorld. <laughs> Do not go to SeaWorld anymore. But they have, I watched the documentary Blackfish because oh, I love it will Blackface. explain. You know, oh, he's got a black not Blackface. Not Blackface. <laughs> 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 oh, God. <laughs> Guess which friend is this, Paul? <laughs> oh, I got nothing. <laughs> Okay. Oh, for one oh. thing, it should be black whale, not black fish. <laughs> <laughs> They're mammals. He's right. And and Ooh. guess what, Paul? 
<laughs> well, they ad- they were aborigines. Jeez. They didn't know what the hell they were talking about. <laughs> Yes, uh, SeaWorld is, really has some bad, bad, bad morals when it comes to their, their thing. Yeah, the, Tilla the, Con the killed cheese? four people. Tilla, she said Tillamook ate five That's the cheese? <laughs> Not cheese! The cheese is going to eat me! <laughs> oh, God. All right. And circuses. Don't yeah, go circuses to circuses, circuses that have animals in it. Well, no, non-human no, animals. Human animals. I know, yes. I went to the go circus. Go see human animals being tortured. Last, That's fine. Last summer, oh, I went boy. to the circus out in uh, Ontario. I kind of felt bad. <laughs> I looked at, man, he looks so depressing. Those poor... Poor, poor so elephants. So lay people. Okay, we're coming. <laughs> we're, we're coming and down. And the uh, ASPCA commercials. Should we extend this section? For, uh, I'll uh, extend it. Off the rails. All right. I'll extend it. Not, okay. So. On a serious note. Yeah. So oh. about animal rights. Yeah. And definitely, <clears throat> we are going to we're gonna look back from the future. Da, da, da. That's why I paused. I knew you'd have to do that. And what, what about things like animal experimentation? Yeah. yeah. How do, how do you feel about that as, that as a you know aficionado lover of rats? Yeah, about, that's. Uh, I, I definitely is, have a. Uh, I don't know. I I wouldn't say a hate, but a real dislike for animal experimentation on, especially on rats, because I know that they are extend extend yeah, yes. He did it. Uh, mm-hmm. That they are pack animals. They bond to you just like cats and dogs do, and uh, and oh. Hi there, Nixie. I'm holding one of our little ratties now. Anyway, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm holding my ratty too. The thing this is, one has this. The hell is that? Yeah, it's because oh, the because these oh, come oh, from, yeah, from yeah. Them to give them lab tumors. rats it's and they bred them to have right tumors to grow oh, wow. tumors, oh. Wow. so they could be experimented See? on. Right. Oh, okay. And the problem is, is that. Rat experimentation has saved a lot of human yeah, lives. Exactly. So I'm torn on the issue because I love pet rats. I love rats because I know that they are wonderful, loving mammals. This is, is another, one of those things another form where, of kinship. This yeah. is this is how I get. This is how I have uh, put it. Uh, how I see it in my mind because I feel the same way about. I don't like the idea that we eat meat and meat is animals that die. You know. But I've, I've come to this conclusion, as long as I'm not, and it's kind of selfish, but it works for me. As long as I'm not involved in it directly, I'm kind of okay with it. Because I feel mm-hmm. it's it's something that needs to happen, um, experimenting on certain animals for the greater good. Mm-hmm. The greater good. It, it needs to happen, and for, yeah, for food. I mean, we are, I for the greater we are good. omnivores. Yeah. I, don't I, mean, like that, that that is. I don't like that kind of way of thinking about it, though. Because like, if I'm going that's to eat I'm something, I would rather... Like watch a video of what it looks like when the, one of those animals is slaughtered. That's kind of nope. weird, but the reason why I want to do that is I want to just kind of check myself and go like, if I had to slaughter this animal myself, would I actually still eat it? Well, see, and that's the point. And I would, I, we I would, 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 I would not. Yeah. Well, see, I that's would. the point is we divorced ourselves yeah. Yeah. from the actual killing of the animal. I think that allows us to justify it. If we had to do it personally, and and I have when I was a kid growing up, chickens and ducks um, and rabbits. That you don't you don't want to well, eat them as much there was when you a lot have to more kill to chew them. On in that section, yeah, there was. Maybe that's decided. a good topic for the future. In fact, Maybe. next week is not going to be that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Joey. What will next week be? Well, first of all, thank you, Paul, for bringing morality and ethics yeah, and, the, and the most excellent. defensive uh-huh. image. <laughs> <laughs> My <laughs> pleasure. Sorry, rambling uh, episode ever. And uh, next week, I'm sticking with my super theme from superheroes last time to do super one, movies. which is going to be really fun. Supernatural. Ooh, oh, supernatural. yeah. Do we have to, watch, have the have movie? to watch the show? <laughs> the super, him. super <laughs> Actually, it's pretty good. Wasn't that Nine a movie seasons. with John Travolta or something? All the women love it. Supernatural? Okay, no. Look it up. Uh, anyway, so Supernatural, it's basically going to be uh, rationality that? fest, I guess. But we're going to talk about aliens. We're going to talk about yeah. ghosts phenomena. and, oh, and phenomena. I'm going to be partially open-minded because that's kind of where I came from, even though now I'm more rational. And most of us here are rational, but rational thinkers, especially Kale and Daryl. But uh, I, I really want to... Want to go into the the screw them? Minu- we try to be the minutia of all the things, uh, all the craziness that people uh, 
think might be real. And hey, you're not framing it in a bad light by calling it craziness, are you? No, not at all. Okay, we're gonna give it a fair shake. I promise. Not. No, probably not. <laughs> All right. But uh, I think it'll be interesting to see how we handle it. So that'll be next week on Incoherent Woo! Rambling. Hey, we are, we are opinion and editorial, so it's okay. We can we can say it's dumb. Yes, we can. I will say that most of it's pretty dumb, but I kind of some of it I hold out for being real. Because he wants to believe. I do. I want to believe. Or it could have been real long ago. In a galaxy. All right. So uh, remember, yes. you can always reach us at uh, show at iamrambly.com. You can always give us some comments on our website. Please let us know what yeah. you think of things. Tell us how offensive this really and was. I sense a video yeah. rub down coming out of this. Somewhere. <laughs> Somewhere. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Some, sometime around the point where my ribs were hurting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, All right. So this is Joey Shamo. Hunter. K.L. Anderson. And Daryl Jors. Remember, you can find... O-R-S. Yes, do, dot, dot com. com. <laughs> and I wasn't going to say it this time, but... You can find all of us <laughs> at <laughs> imrambly.com or Daryl at Jors.com. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you next week. Remember, we're incoherent, no. so well, you, you don't, don't have to. to! Thanks for listening. You can now stop screaming at the open air. Listeners should put their minds back in their upright positions and resume traditional thinking. Find us on imrambling.com for access to all of our weekly ramblings, show notes, general discussions, and any projects from Incoherent Ramblings. Like us on Facebook and rate us on iTunes. So long, and thanks for all the fish. We're incoherent, no. so you don't have to. Be. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. We almost made it. All right. <laughs> no, you know, that was so good because she paused. You'll be able to cut that out if you want yeah. to. Damn it. No, no, what you need to do is cut it out, and then we'll put it in at the end of the... As the yeah. As the <laughs> right now, you're listening to an outtake. Woo! Hooray! Whoa! Whoa. Okay, hit stop. Stop.